Thank you, everybody. On behalf of Hannah and myself, I'd like to thank you all for coming here today. Your presence, your presence means the world to us. And it makes our special day all the more special. May we always merit to celebrate joyous and happy occasions together. So everybody's asking me, why an upchernish? What's an upchernish? I've never heard of this thing before, Rabbi. What are you doing? I've heard of a bar mitzvah, a bris, and a wedding. But an upchernish, whoever heard? You see, the Torah commands us certain commandments regarding hair, about cutting the beard, and about how to cut your hair on your head. And adjacent to that commandment of hair is the commandment, or commandment, of not eating the fruit of the tree for the first three years. Which means, if you plant an apple tree or a fig tree in your backyard, you're not allowed to eat the fruit for the first three years. What's the and from here we learn the powerful connection between the fruits of the tree and the cutting of the hair. Indeed, the Torah tells us that you're not allowed to cut down a fruit-bearing tree for no reason because man is the tree of the field. Just like you can't eat the fruits of the tree for three years, so too, so too, you're not, allowed, you're not supposed to cut the hair of a child for the first three, ter three years of his life. Just for a moment to explore, this is Mayor by the way, he's almost two, so his hair is still filling in. He's, he's taking notes for next year's upturnish. So why is man compared to a tree? Because just like a tree takes a long, long time before it bears any fruit, you could easily give up before you see fruit from your tree. But when it produces, boy oh boy, it's much more than you invested initially. A single seed has flourished into an entire ecosystem in a tree. Same with a child. A little baby has become a leader amongst his people. Like a tree, a child needs blood, sweat, and tears to raise them properly. You know, to my parents and parents-in-law, they say that the definition of grandchildren Five seconds rule. On cue. Yeah, that's the five second rule, right? <laughs> they say that the definition of grandchildren is the reward for not having murdered your children. <laughs> but you know, the investment... <laughs> but the investment doesn't begin with you, the farmer. It's not just about the here and now, like a tree, which is all about the roots. It's the bubbies and zadies. And the strength of our connection to our, our ancestors and our heritage that will produce the most powerful fruit. That's why children are like trees, because they need their roots. And one more thing, it doesn't end with a child. Each individual fruit that grows in the tree has the potential to develop into a tree of its own, producing children, producing more and more trees until the end of time. So there's a beginning to the trees which starts deep in the roots, and that's the bubbies and the zadies, the heritage and the ancestors of our kindula. And then there's the fruits which continue to flourish over and over and over. I'm deeply moved to share with you the divine providence of what's happening here today. What's bashert about what's happening here today. As we stand, Han and I, flanked by Hannah's parents from New York and my parents from Johannesburg who, thank God, have yet to miss a single simcha in our family. And may God give them the strength and the, and the ability to continue to do so throughout all the simchas and celebrations that we always have. 
in good health together. The divine providence of this moment to today is that today happens to be <clears throat> the 31st yard site of my grandfather, my Zayda Shalom, after whom our firstborn, our first our eldest son, Shalom, is named. Can we get the photo on the screen? We dug up this photo. It was a picture, hopefully we'll get it up soon. There it is. On that photo you'll see my Zayda Shalom in his uh, carpentry store in Jerusalem with my mother, the young woman on the left. My Zayda Shalom in his carpentry store in Jerusalem which is still active and functioning under my uncle Tzvi, my father's brother. His yard site is today, and in that photo, that little boy over there, cute little kid, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's funny, Mus? <laughs> that's me having my upchernish wow. with my grandfather in Jerusalem, and today is his yard site. Tzachana and I, this is the ultimate Lador Vador from generation to generation as the day of my, uh, on the day of my Zayt Shalom, who initiated my Jewish education in that photograph comes full circle with our son Zeb whose Jewish education is yeah. sorry, his name is Zebi Vigler <laughs> Good thing you're listening, Zevi. <laughs> you can't pull the wool over his eyes. As I celebrate the initiation of my Jewish education in that photo with my Zayda Shalom, today is his yard site. Hannah and I are coming full circle as we initiate the education of our son Zevi Vigler, whose Jewish education is initiated right here today as the fruits of the tree would never survive unless they were protected from the sun and the harsh weather by the leaves. That's where you come in. If the bubbies and zaydis are the trunk of the tree, and if Khan and I are the branch of this tree, and if the beautiful children are the various fruits on the branch, then all of you, our friends and family, are the leaves protecting our precious fruit. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your love, your friendship, and your support, for always being there for us through the fair weather and the fine, through the good times and the tougher times. Look at what we have built together. This is only the beginning because the true fruits of the community are just starting to blossom, you're looking at them right now, it gives me great pleasure to call up our fruits, to sing a special song from the Talmud. Big look kids, please come on up. The song that our kids are about to sing is a song from the Talmud, a story of a, of a weary traveler who comes through the desert, thirsty and parched, until he finds an oasis. There he rests under a tree and he drinks from the water. Beneath it he eats from a fruit. And he says, Ilan, Ilan, tree, O oh tree, v'amea varechecha, with what can I bless you? Peirotecha metukim, your fruits are sweet, v'tzil chana'e, your shadow is great, your shade is great. Amat amayim overet achtecha, the, uh, the river of water flows beneath you. <laughs> Rather may it be your will the, the traveler blesses the tree that all, that all the seeds that come from you shall be just like you. That all these little fruits should be able to make their parents, their babis, their zedis, their saba and safta all proud as they exceed their ancestors' aspirations and dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it away for the Big Blue Kids. Yeah.
Ilani, 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 Ilan, Bame, Ava, Arecha, Ilani, Ilan, 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 Bame, Ava, Arecha, Peraisecha, Mesuim, Shelchana. Did you know that 
it is actually a kosher animal, but we don't really get to eat that much because it's difficult to catch them. They store them properly because they run too fast. Me, a deer, is actually a puppy's name. Maybe that's why he has a hard time sitting. That's how quickly you should run to do a mitzvah. When you have it, the opportunity, hurry and do it right away. Don't delay. Fly 
It's hard to believe how quickly these first three years have flown by. This brilliant, happy, and beautiful little child has kept us busy, that's for sure. But it flew by nonetheless, and I suspect that the years to come will be no different. I want to take this opportunity to share a few wishes I have for my little boy. Bring him a little closer. So I could appear on my notes and be next to him at the same time. So, Zevi, today... My name is Zevi Bigler. Zevi Bigler. Today... I wish for you to have strong legs to help you run and jump and skip and hop, to take you to the places you need to be, always on the ready and on call to walk those glorious two miles round trip to show. Robust arms consistently outstretched to those less fortunate, and even those more fortunate, they need it too. And for one day in the not too far distance, yeah, Debbie's ready to say olive face. And in one day in the not too far distance to later to fill in, a sensitive heart to guide you and a sharp mind that reminds that you are a Jewish prince, that you are one of the lucky ones who was born with the mission set out before him. Everything you need to know about being happy and fulfilled is at your fingertips. You have been blessed with grandparents, great-grandparents and beyond who have set a path for you so clear and distinct and are exceptional role models for you to become a truly exceptional, extraordinary human being. Zeha Katan Gadol This little one will one day be big. Great things are to come from you, my Zevi Vigler. I know it, and my wish for you, my baby, is that you should know it too. Today is a big milestone. I won't pretend I'm not nervous to cut off these beautiful locks. But as today is indeed the inauguration of Zevi's formal Jewish education, we figured, why not start right here and right now? And so we decided that it would be appropriate in teaching Zevi, Zevi Vigler, to be a giving and generous and kind um, little boy, Jewish little boy. We're actually going to be donating Zevi's pony to an organization called Chai Lifeline, who um, works with children with cancer. So, Zevi is going to start his formal initiation right now. He's going to say his Aleph face for us and a couple other things, and then we'll be cutting off his pony. Oh, uh, well, baby, oh, uh, well. 